We've talked about how to set retail prices for our national brand merchandise that we are purchasing from vendors. Now, what we're going to do is talk about how to set retail prices for our private label goods or goods that we develop and source on our own. The way we can set prices for our private label goods is using a break-even analysis. Um, a break-even analysis tells a retailer how many units they need to sell in order to begin making a profit on a product that they're carrying in their store. And so maybe retailers are going to use this break-even analysis because they want to see their break-even sales dollars to help estimate a profit. Uh, maybe they're trying to justify introducing a new product in the store or maybe they're just looking for a number of sales that they need to achieve in order to cover a price change on an item. Um, whatever they're doing, that break-even analysis is pretty valuable uh, because it determines based on fixed and variable cost how much merchandise we need to sell to achieve a desired amount of profit. And the break-even analysis generally starts with a break-even point. So how much merchandise do we need to sell to achieve $0 in profit? So that's where we'll start with our examples here in this lecture. Um, important things to note about fixed and variable cost. Fixed costs are costs that do not vary. Uh, variable costs do vary based on the quantity of merchandise that we're going to produce. For this class, I'm always going to give you the fixed cost and the variable cost. So you're not going to have to figure out what those are on your own. Um, those will always be given to you. So let's start by looking at a example of the break-even analysis. And we're going to pretend that we are PetSmart and we are considering introducing a new private label dry dog food in our stores. We get some information from our manufacturer and they tell us that the fixed cost for the manufacturing is going to be $700,000 and that's going to cover our equipment, our overhead, um, and other fixed costs. Um, our manufacturer also tells us that the variable cost is going to be $5 for bag. And this is going to cover our labor and materials for the individual bag of food. Um, PetSmart is going to do a lot of analysis on competing dog foods and other private label dog foods. And they determine that they are going to charge their customers $12 per bag, or they're going to set the price at $12 per bag. So given all this information, how many bags of dog food do we need to sell to break even? And how many bags of dog food do we need to sell in order to achieve our desired le level of profit? The first thing we need to do is determine that break even quantity. So I have a equation up here on the screen um, that you will use to determine the break even quantity. The break even quantity is based on fixed cost, the sales price and the variable cost. So when I put in my information, uh, this is what the equation would look like. I would take my fixed cost of $700,000 and I'm going to divide that by the sales price minus the variable cost, 12 minus five, which is seven. So if I do that math, 700,000 divided by seven, I know that I need to sell 100,000 bags of dog food in order to break even. So to make $0, I need to sell 100,000 bags of dog food. Does a retailer go in business to make $0 of profit? Absolutely not. Uh, generally, a retailer like PetSmart is going to have a profit number in mind when they're introducing a new uh, product. And so a retail entrepreneur is going to say, all right, if I can make um, a certain level of profit, then I will introduce this product. So they start by thinking, what is the profit for every dollar of bag food that I sell over the $100,000 quantity? Well, the answer to that is seven. So I'll take my sales price minus my variable cost to get the profit that I will make on every bag of dog food sold over 100,000 bags. So let's assume that PetSmart wants to achieve a profit of at least $100,000. How many bags of dog food do they need to sell in order to achieve $100,000 in profit? The best way to do this is add our profit goal to our fixed cost number. So our numerator now becomes $800,000 and our denominator stays at seven. So in order to make $100,000 in profit, PetSmart needs to sell 114,286 bags of dog food. 
So to make the necessary profit needed, they need to sell the 100,000 bags to break even and an additional 14,286 bags to make their desired profit le level. One thing to note about the break even quantity, always round up. Can you sell half a bag of dog food or 0.2 bags of dog food? No. So let's just make sure we round to the nearest whole number when we are calculating our break even quantities. Let's do another example. Let's say we're Walmart and we wanna introduce a new private label tortilla chip. We find out from our manufacturer that our fixed cost is gonna be a million dollars. We know that our variable cost is $1.25 per bag. And based on some market analysis, we've decided that we are going to charge customers $1.99 per bag of tortilla chips. What is the break-even quantity? If we look at our break-even quantity equation, this is how it should be set up. A million dollars divided by $1.99 minus $1.25. So if you do the math, what you'll see is that Walmart needs to sell 1,351,352 bags of chips. They need to sell that number of chips in order to make $0 in profit. Would Walmart introduce a new private label brand of chips in order to make $0 in profit? Absolutely not. They need to make a profit. So let's assume that Walmart wants to achieve a profit of $2 million. How many bags of chips do they need to sell? Let's set it up like this. Walmart now needs to sell 4,054,054 bags of chips in order to achieve a $2 million profit. Is that possible? Here's some information for you. There are over 3,400 Walmart supercenters in the United States, which means each Walmart store needs to sell 1,200 bags of tortilla chips per year, which is only about 99 bags of chips each month for each store. So is it possible for each Walmart store to sell 99 bags of private label chips a month? Absolutely. So given all of this information, if you're a Walmart executive, you should probably go ahead and introduce this new private label tortilla chip based on this break-even analysis. So I have a few more break-even analysis examples for you posted uh, in the practice problem uh, list for the chapter 14 uh, materials. So you can find that in the content folder. And I highly recommend that you pull this lecture back up, pull these slides back up, get those practice problems out and start working through the math um, for the break-even analysis so that you're comfortable with calculating break-even quantity and also um, the profitability quantity.